Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to be messing about a little bit on this laptop because I'm sure we have a river out here uh, still. Um, I'm going to introduce David Stevens from our um, SMA committee uh, who will speak about the TDC um, local plan. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for uh, all coming on what is not the warmest day of the year. Um, it's great to see so many people here. Uh, before I start on the local plan, I just want to thank uh, the people who have uh, given up their time to produce some wonderful food for us. And if you still fancy buying some cakes and other produce, that will be available uh, once, once we finish here. So please do help out. There's also raffle tickets, uh, some lovely prizes. I know this is some alcohol, obviously. Uh, I don't condone drinking of alcohol at any time, but perhaps over Christmas uh, we may make an excuse. So you might win some, uh, some alcohol there. Okay, so the local plan. Well, first of all, uh, a disclaimer. You have to make a disclaimer at times like this that I am no expert. I am a, just like all of you, really. I just like to read as much as I can and try and find out information. The other thing I'm trying to do is to waffle on whilst at the same time trying to find my reading glasses. Uh, and uh, that's very difficult for a, for a man to multitask. So uh, I think I've almost got away with it without you noticing. Okay, so there we are. Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, the local plan. It's a mess. And it's a mess of TDC making. They've had it an awful lot of time to get it right, and they haven't done so. Now, at a recent ONS meeting, there were many speakers that uh, were highlighting areas where the local plan, in their opinion, could be considered to be unsound. And remember, if it's considered to be unsound, the inspector will dismiss it. it will, he will instruct TDC to withdraw the local plan. And if that happens, TDC basically have to start again at great expense in terms of time and money. At the very least, the inspector can say, you need to go away and make modifications. And that, again, will be time and money. Now, at that overview and scrutiny meeting, you wouldn't believe this from some of the uh, uh, reports that come out, but it, the overview and scrutiny voted 9 to 1 against the recommendations to publish the draft local plan. It wasn't close, it was 9 to 1. And that is significant. Now, we need to bear in mind that overview and scrutiny have no voting powers. They're, they're not a decision maker. They can make recommendations to the cabinet to act on. But what they are doing is sending a very clear message that as it stands, this plan is unsound in their opinion. And they should look at that and modify it. What have TDC done? They're trying to ignore it, as if that vote never happened. They're ignoring elected members who are trying to give them advice. They're choosing to ignore that advice. That can't be right. Now obviously the crucial vote happens in January, when the full council do get their chance to vote. More about that in a little while. Also recently, Craig Solly gave a two hour meeting in Birchington. It was a brilliant presentation where he outlined point after point where the local plan was unsound. Now, I don't intend to speak for two hours, so, please, please, you know, so I'm not going to go through all the points that he raised. I've just picked out a few. Each, uh, any one of these could be enough to make the thing unsound and therefore sent back to TDC. The first is the duty. It's a legal duty to cooperate with local authorities. Now it's not a duty to agree, but they should have meetings where they try to come to a consensus that works for all, because Manston affects all of us. 
and therefore those meetings should have been should have taken place. There should be meeting notes, <coughs> agreements. As far as I know, that hasn't been forthcoming. Dover District Council in March, I outlined that they felt at that time that TDC had not fulfilled their legal duty to cooperate. T DDC, Dover District Council, firmly support the airport. I have no information that suggests that their stance on that has changed at all. The next is the Thanet Transport Strategy. Now, this has been um, devised between KCC and TDC over a period of time. This, is, this hasn't actually gone to the uh, Transport Committee yet. It goes actually on the 12th, on Tuesday. In the report for that meeting, it says this is a consultation document. So it's just at the consultation phase as it stands. Nothing has been decided. And yet, it is crucial that that transport strategy works. They're proposing an inner ring road that's going to cost £70 million. Pounds. Okay? Good question. Somebody says, where is that coming from? Well, I'll tell you, and it says it in the report, it's not coming from KCC. KCC are providing nothing. No money at all out of that 70 million. TDC are paying nothing. 70 million pounds is coming from developers. They are dependent on our infrastructure, the road infrastructure, on developers. <laughs> <Hang on. laughs> now, you need to realise the significance of that. It's a ring road. If a developer doesn't come up with the goods on a particular section, it's not a ring road. It's a bottleneck. It's a traffic jam. Now, I'm going to highlight just one area. Not, actually, I'm going to highlight till nine. But two. Shot and Dane Road, the estimate is that's going to cost £30 million. If you look at the plan, at the developers near to Shot and Dane Road, there isn't much in the way of development. So who's paying for that 30 million stretch? But even if they did find the money for that, which I doubt, it then comes to Shot and Dane cul-de-sac. Because they're closing off that bit around what we call Coffin Corner. Coffin Corner is a complete and utter mess. And it's a mess because it's driven by a developer that wanted to build on that Nash Court Lane Road, all around St Gregory's School and so on. They wanted that land to build, therefore that's included in a little bit of, of, of that inner ring road. So, in terms of unsoundness, the Cabinet voted through that, and yet it's still only a consultation phase. That cannot be right. Linked with that is an even more important document, which is the Infrastructure Delivery Plan. Now this covers all of the infrastructure, not just roads, okay, so it's uh, utilities, policing, etc, etc, an awful lot of things. As far as I can see, I can have, I've found no record of Cabinet or over in scrutiny seeing the infrastructure delivery plan. So unless you know that your infrastructure is deliverable, how can you make a judgement? How can you vote on something? You don't know what, whether it's, you know, actually can come true, whether it can actually happen. <coughs> Honestly, it's a, well, it's a farce. Now we, clearly here, as supporters of the airport, that is a focus, but there's so many things, but I do, I do want to come to the airport. There's been no viability study done on whether Manston can deliver housing and mixed use. So how do they know it could be an airport? Well, for a start, it can't, oh, sorry, how can they know it could be housing? Well, it can't because it's going to be an airport. We know that's going to happen. But there are other things there. The cost and practicalities of dealing with a contaminated land. Okay? 
No real studies have been done on, although they suspect there's a lot of contamination there over 100 years of an airport, who knows what needs to happen? Do they need to remove all of the topsoil and replace it? Where's that going to go? Disposal? Huge costs involved. Much of the development is over the Thanet Aquifer. Well, we already know the concerns there about shortage of water as it is. Now, they're going to build over there. There's problems of contamination, but also use of water, disposal of waste, <coughs> and so on. And we know that the uh, statutory bodies have already expressed those concerns over a year ago, and none, none of those concerns have been addressed by, oh God, I've got to say it, Stonehill Park. <laughs> <laughs> There's also been no habitat risk assessment, which is, again, a crucial thing that needs to be happened. That hasn't happened for Manchester Airport yet. So lots of things uh, are highly there. Craig Soddy went into a, a lot more. But that gives you a flavour of what is so wrong with the local plan as it is. Now, I mentioned about the vote on the 18th of January. I firmly believe there are sufficient councillors now within TDC who have seen the light. <coughs> Without being overdramatic, they've been lied to over various things. Or misled at the very least. And they are starting to question things that they've been told over a period of time. They have looked at the local plan and they see it as being unsound. And there is no point in voting through something on January the 18th that is then going to be rejected. It is far better, surely, to work through and come up with a plan that will be acceptable in terms of soundness by the inspector, that will be accepted to elected members, that will be accepted to <coughs> neighbouring authorities, that will be accepted by all of us. It's better to take time and get it right than try and rush through by some arbitrary March the 31st as if that's some you know, saving moment. If you get it in by then, then it all will be well. Okay? Because it won't. And I think, you know, as I say, I'm confident that the councillors, our elected members, will do the right thing on January the 18th. So, lots to change, but I want to just focus on one thing, and that's the Manson thing. What can we suggest to them that they do? What will be acceptable to the planning inspector? Well, I looked at Crawley. Crawley had their, their local plan adopted in December of 2015. Now, for those who don't know, Crawley are desperately short of development land. They've got very little in the way to open land. Yet despite that, in their local plan, they safeguarded a large section of land just in case there was a need for a second runway. Sound familiar? Also with Crawley, they identified a housing need of 10,125 dwellings. They looked at what was available and they decided that they were going to deliver 5,100 dwellings. That left an unmet need of just over 5,000 dwellings. That was in their plan. That was accepted. They agreed to review, and I think this again is a crucial thing, they agreed to review the safeguarded land once the decision on the second runway was known. Another important thing is that Crawley have been very active in negotiating with neighbouring authorities to help deliver their unmet need. And obviously there are clear parallels, you don't need me to, to, to spell that out. So what I'm suggesting is that Thanet District Council safeguard Manston for aviation use only until the DCO decision is made that they identify an unmet need of two and a half thousand dwellings. Now it could be more. I'm just looking at the message, but if you were looking at, for example, 
Grade 1 agricultural land. Should they be building on Grade 1 agricultural land? So there are other factors, but obviously, you know, I'll concentrate on the, on the Manson issue. But they could certainly identify that need. They would agree to, to review the safeguarded land once the DCO decision was made. And they agree to begin negotiations with neighbouring authorities to help deliver the unmet need. Now, negotiations, there's a lot of on the news now about negotiations, aren't there? A bit of give and take. Well, all the neighbouring authorities have expressed their desire that Manston is an airport. So that might be a pretty good starting point if you're saying, you know, we can deliver this, but we may need a bit of help here. So, they are my suggestions in terms of uh, what TDC should do, and indeed, um, we've come up with a more formal uh, <coughs> alternative to the uh, policy SPO5 that we feel could work. My final point is this, that <coughs> if and it's a big if, I don't think it's going to happen. But if the local plan were passed on January the 18th, then we must all object and give our reasons. And I know what we've all done, we've done so many objections to the Thanet District Council plan in the past. There are 40,000 comments by uh, Thanet residents, uh, going all the way back to 2015, those are not going to go forward to the planning inspector. TDC have made that very clear. So any objections you've made in the past aren't going to go forward. So you must, even if you've made two or three objections in the past, you must put in new objections. As I said, I don't think it's going to come to that because I think it's going to be rejected. But just in case, that's what we should do. I'm getting the, uh, sometimes when you're doing a speech you get a, 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 a green light, an orange light, and then a red light. Uh, in the Manson Hall, they put on the blowers when you talk for too long, so uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much indeed.